G'day guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Sean, hope you're doing well. Um, today we're going to be doing a bit of a part two to the Noctua fan replacement and how that's turned out for me. Um, if you're new here and you haven't subscribed already, make sure you hit the subscription button down below so you don't miss out on any of the other tips and tricks that I show this year. Um, if you like this video, then chuck it a like. If you found it helpful, maybe leave a comment and let me know why. And if you didn't like this video, maybe hit the dislike button down below. I don't really mind either way. Um, I mentioned in part one the reason why I was doing this video was to try and reduce the uh, system temperature and the system noise in this very, very small room. Um, Noctua sent over a bunch of fans and we're going to talk through uh, uh, all those, uh, how that went, sorry, um, what fans I used and how the performance has been with the computer. So thanks for watching this video. Let's begin. All right, so just a quick overview. The PC case that I'm using is the Fantex Evolve Enthu or Fantex Enthu Evolve ITX case. Um, I was using it with the AMD Ryzen 5 2600 CPU overclocked to four gigahertz with an AMD RX 580 eight gigabyte graphic card. The fans that I was originally running was a Noctua 120mm in the front, a Fantex, uh, the, the included Fantex 140mm uh, fan in the back, and then the two Cooler Master RGB fans on a 240mm rad. So the CPU is being cooled by the ML240 RGB water cooling kit. And what we've basically done is ripped out all those fans and replaced them with all of the Noctua fans. Originally, I wanted to put the Noctua, I think it's the 200mm fan in the front, but Fantex and their ultimate wisdom, and I don't know really why they've done this, but they've basically restricted the only 200 mil fan that you can put into the front of the case is the Fantex version, which is kind of a bit of a disappointment if you're someone who's a bit of a um, modder, someone who is a bit of an enthusiast and they want to change out some of the original hardware, as you can expect that most people would. Um, over time, they might have a case for three or four years and they might tinker and change things. Um, for the fact that they can't, you know, you can't use any other fan other than the Fantex one. It's a bit of a disappointment. Um, overall though, we put in two of the new Noctua AF, uh, I think AF12s in the top for the radiator. So they've been amazing. Uh, we've put in Noctua, uh, I think it's the AF14 uh, in the back, the 140mm. So everything is now Noctua. We've left the Noctua 120mm fan in the front. So a 120mm at the front pulling air through, a 140mm at the back exhausting, and then two Noctua fans for the radiator pulling air up and cooling the CPU. Um, the BIOS I've left alone, I haven't touched anything there, so all the fans are running at their standard defaults. I've just got it set to the standard profile. And the first impressions is that it is very, very quiet, um, much quieter than the Cooler Master fans and the Fantech fan that I had in there before. And I'm getting equal performance to what I was getting with the old configuration. So nothing is getting hotter, but nothing has gotten cooler either. But what's happened is the actual system noise in the room has been a lot better. Um, I'll include some benchmarks so you can see a sort of a comparison when I was running IDA64 stress test plus Fermark, Fermark benchmark, uh, benchmarking the GPU. Um, but what I've actually definitely found as a huge benefit when gaming is that I'm actually able to reach the full clock speed of the GPU, which is 1340 megahertz during gaming, during long sessions, and it never thirtle, uh, thermal throttles. What was happening before with the old configuration, it was getting so hot in this room that the graphic card was peaking at about 90 degrees Celsius. Um, and then what was having to happen was the GPU was dropping its core clock speed down to around about 1150 or 1200 megahertz. So what was happening, happening in games like Apex Legends um, is that the frame rate would drop anywhere between 90 down to 70 frames um, just because the clock speed of the graphic card was uh, fluctuating so much. But now with the new configuration, um, the clock speed of the graphic card is running at 1340 megahertz all day long. It's not thermal throttling. It peaks at only around about 80 degrees Celsius during gaming. Um, and that's with having the game being recorded with AMD Relive. So in my opinion, that's a huge win. If the core clock speed is actually able to run at the advertised rate, um, and the games aren't dropping in frames, which is definitely not what was happening before. You're not getting any frame jitters. I think that's a huge success. The fans, yes, I know they are expensive, but for me, for the fact that I'm in a small room, I do a lot of recording in here, streaming, um, my game is, gameplay is much smoother. I think that's, that's a win. And I know some people will argue that 
you know, spending money on fans to get an increase in performance. You know, you might as well save that money and put it towards a new graphic card. I 100% agree with you, but I'm in a situation where, like I said, the acoustics are actually just as important as the thermal performance and the performance of games and things like that. So I'll leave the benchmarks on the screen so you can see them running. And if you have any questions about the configuration or any of that kind of stuff, let me know. Um, what I do plan on doing though is maybe a little video in part three, which is putting the Fantex 200mm fan in the front just to pull even more air through and maybe see what uh, difference that makes to the sound and the overall performance of the system. So I've already reached out to a few places to see if I can get that 200mm fan. We'll have to wait and see. It's not a very common fan to find. Um, and yeah, let me know what you think. I'm a big fan. I know there's not as much RGB in there, but I think it's still plenty. Um, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. If you like this video, chuck it a like. If you have any questions, let me know. As I said, I'm always here to get back to you guys and hit up uh, any concerns that you might have. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Cheers.